for this particular talk. This is uh, what I am going to talk regarding the CBC, which we do in every patient almost whosoever comes to the OPD and especially the, uh, it's a topic of interest for the PG students and the newer doctors who hardly bother for this investigation after seeing the TLC, DLC, hemoglobin and platelets. But really we miss many parameters which may help us to approach to diagnosis of various diseases. These are the objectives. Whenever we see the CBC report, we just interpret and which are useful for the diagnosis of the various types of anemia, whether it is microcytic, macrocytic or normocytic anemia. It can reflect acute or chronic infections. Friends, it is also useful in various kinds of allergies and problems which are related with the clottings and the malignancy like leukemia. So normally in every CVC we find this RBC, hematocrit, hemoglobin, MCV, MCHC and many other things, almost 18 parameters. So we normally see for the RBC count, which everyone knows, then the hemoglobin and hematocrit value and then we come to the MCV and MCHC which is very important because this value of MCV is responsible for if it is small then for the microcytic, if normal then normocytic and if large then the macrocytic anemia may be there in the person. Similarly for MCHC which is decreased in the hypochromic anemia and is normal in the normochromic anemia. These are the values for the MCH which is 27 to 32 picogram for RDW, which we call as red cell distribution width, that is also very important. Then we come to the degree of N isocytosis, which is related with the RDW. Reticulocyte count, which often we miss and we don't see, this is an important value which is needed in the evaluation of any kind of anemia. And in normal range, it is 1 to 2 percent. When it goes up, that means there are features of hemolytic anemia, we should see for the serum bilirubin, which should be normally up to 3 to 4 milligram, 3 to 4 milligram percent. And uh, if reticulocyte count goes down, then it may be related with the nutritional deficiency or some bone marrow ailment. When we centrifuge a sample, we find that in a normal sample of the blood, the upper 57 percent part, which is straw colored, is, has, is the plasma and which is containing most of the platelets over there. Then there is a buffy coat which is around 1% which carries WBC and lower down 42% which we called as packed cell volume and that is having chiefly the RBCs. Then there is a rule of 3. Suppose the RBC count is 5 million then in adult the hemoglobin should be 15 gram percent. And similarly, the hematocrit value should be around 45 to 45. So this is rule of three. Say this is three times, hemoglobin is three times of the RBC and hematocrit value is three times of hemoglobin. And if not, that means it indicates micro or macrocytosis or hypochromasia. When we look at the workup of the anemia, which I told you it could be microcytic, normocytic, macrocytic, I will show you certain slides also. So microcytic, it is seen in the patients, especially in the iron deficiency and chronic infection. And we should not forget that microcytic anemia may be there in the thalassemia, despite of repeated transfusions. Normocytic may be there in the certain hemoglobinopathies and primary bone marrow disorders. And macrocytic, which we see in the megaloblastic and certain diseases which are related to the liver, especially alcohol-induced hepatitis. Here is a slide, especially for the important of the, for the PG student, those who are doing MD. This is showing that the RBC count, hemoglobin, and this third thing is MCV, that is low. So this is seen, this picture is seen in the iron deficiency anemia when we look at the slide. One thing is very important while looking at the CVC, we should also ask to the pathologist that what about the peripheral smear? What did you find in the smear? Which 90% people, they don't give it. They just give a printed report which is having 18 parameters and that, that finishes the story. Neither the clinician nor the pathologist, 
they bother about it. But we should always ask that, please give me a peripheral report. What did you find? Is there any parasite also? Or what is the, say, shape of the RBC? And uh, what is the size of RBC? Normally, WC, WVC is 10 micrometer. And uh, this uh, RBC is around 8. And uh, similarly, the eosinophils they are around 12 micrometer in diameter. So, this microcytic hypochromic anemia picture in which we see that uh, the RVCs, they are hypopigmented, they are small in size. Normal size is, uh, as I told you, it is around 8 micron meter. But this is uh, smaller than that, must be around 5 to 6. And this is the picture which look in the microcytic hypochromic anemia. And microcytic hypochromic anemia, we find, we have to differentiate with the other investigations like serum iron, total iron binding capacity and bone marrow pearl stain. See, in the iron deficiency, we find that serum iron level is low. Similarly, if we see the downward, there is a sideroblastic anemia in which the say, serum iron load is too much. And that we find in the cases of thalassemia. Similarly, in chronic infection, in the iron goes down. But in iron deficiency anemia, one thing is very peculiar that bone marrow pearl strain is negative. It is, the value is zero. Another film a report of the CVC, which is showing that hemoglobin is around uh, 10 and RBC count is 2.69, that is low. But this MCH value is very high, that is 39.6 and MCV is also high. So this kind of picture we find in the megaloblastic anemia. When we look at the film, the size of RBC is bigger than the normal and it is almost equivalent to the WBC size. Or say like small lymphocyte, we find this picture and there is a macrocytosis in this film. So RBC size, when it is different, we call it an isocytosis in which we find different size of RBCs. And in poiclocytosis, there is a different shape of the RVC which we find. I am just going little fast because we have many of the slides, so which will give us some clue regarding the shape of the RVC, how different they are in different kind of diseases. This is the polychromasia in which there is hyperpigmentation. Such kind of picture we find in the cases of thalassemia in which because the overdoses of the iron, the RVC, they get hyperpigmented. Then there is a spherocytosis which is seen in certain diseases like liver disease, thalassemia, hemoglobin disease and post splenectomy patients. Now we just uh, see little bit of WBC, we all find that the normal range is 4 to 18,000 per uh, <coughs> say cubic uh, liter and the neutrophil value is 50 to 70, eosinophil is 1 to 5, basophil is up to 1%. So neutrophil, when the TLC count is more, we must suspect three, four conditions. It could be because of the bacterial infections in which the TLC count is very high. But most of the time, there, if the infection is acute, then the polymorphs are very high. In children, the lymphocytes and in chronic infection, again, the lymphocytes, they are very high. Then second condition is the tissue destruction. Tissue infarct or burn, after that, the neutrophil count goes very high. Third is the leukemia reaction and fourth is the leukemia itself in which we find count even in the legs. And neutrophenia, when we talk of the less count, that is less than 4,000, that is seen in the bone marrow diseases, certain infections like typhoid fever, like viral fever, brucellosis, and in certain anemias of the, and the bone marrow disease like megaloblastic anemia. Eosinophile count, whenever it is high, more than six, then we must consider about something like allergy or parasitic infection. And sometimes in chronic bronchitis also we find the eosinophil count. So these are the conditions in which the eosinophil count is very high. Now we talk of the platelets. This term has become very popular after the dengue fever in which dengue, we find say platelet count is low, it is 10,000, it is 15,000, it is 1 lakh like that. Every day we just see the report and we just see for the platelets. We never see for the PLCR. That is written in the lower part of the say, CBC report. So platelet count, it is normally 1.5 to 2.5 lakhs per cubic mm. But 
if the platelet count is low, suppose if it is around 10 lakh, 10,000, but the PLCR, PLCR value is very high, it is more than 55, then don't worry whether it is dengue or anything, the count will go up. But if PLCR, that is large platelet cell ratio, if it is low and even if the platelet count is around 1 lakh, you must be sure that this count will further go low and you must be mentally prepared for the platelet transfusion in future in these patients if they are suffering of some disease like viral fever or some dengue like diseases. So talking of the platelets in the part where it is increased is the exer after exercise in pregnancy, high attitudes and splenectomy patients and the count is very low in the physiological disease like say menstruation, it may be less after hemorrhage and sudden viral infections like septicemia and dengue fever. And some of the disease of the bone marrow, they are associated with the, uh, say, low count of the platelets and sometimes in the patients of leukemia, we may find like this picture. Talking of the red blood cells, they are decreased in trauma and surgery and after GI bleed, there may be a impaired, say, after a impaired production is like, say, anaplastic anemia and there is an increased destruction like some G6PD deficiency or hemolytic anemia, maybe certain kind of infection or disseminated intravascular coagulation. The count of WRVC is increased in polycythemia vera or in higher attitude persons and certain diseases like COPD, pulmonary hypertension and obstructive sleep apnea, we may find a high count of the RVC. When we talk of the reticulocyte count, which is normally 1 to 2 percent, and, uh, and we note that this is causing anemia inside or outside. So, <clears throat> this card, the distribution of the red cell, distribution with the bit, is quantitative, which measures a numerical expression of N isocytosis. And that indicates the distribution of individual with RVC volume. When we see RVC on the peripheral smear, we may find many of the diseases which we can diagnose, like megaloblastic anemia we can see. If the size of the RVC is equal to the size of the WVC, then this is megaloblastic. In iron deficiency, the size is less, so that is microcytic. Then certain other conditions like, say, sickle cell anemia, in, in which it is like that the shape of the, say, sickle. And thalassemia, we may find a nucleated RVC. So, the cells of RVC, they may be different in different kind of diseases like macrocyte cells, which we may find in between B12 diseases and chronic alcoholism and in the certain liver diseases like NAFLD. Then there are the tear drop cells. Hardly we have heard these names, but they are seen in the newborn and in thalassemia major. Then there is espirocytes, that's again a variation of the RVC and uh, in which the hereditary spherocytosis is there, there sometimes after AVO incompatibility, these kind of cells develop and these kind of cells are also seen in the after post-transfusion and certain patients of burns. Then the elliptocytes, there are normochromic cells which are normally less than 1% of the RVC and they are seen in certain patients, which is very common in malaria and megaloblastic anemia. Then we come to the bur cells, which is known as echinocytes, because the shape that looks like echinocytes, cyst, and they are seen in the renal failure patients in dehydration, and after giving the fluid and correction of the, say, electrolyte imbalance, the cells, they become normal. Then we come to the Spur cells, or they are also known as acanthocytes, they are having small spurs like the osteophytes, it looks like that. They are seen in the patients of vitamin E deficiency, malabsorption syndrome, and after post splenectomy. Bite cells, which are also known as dagma sites, they appear as a cookie, look like a cookie, and uh, with a bite taken out. You just see the shape of these two cells, which are visible over here. And they are seen as G6PD deficiency. We find this kind of, say, cells and there is a, some serum bilirubin is raised or especially after taking certain drugs like chloroquine, then we should go for a G6PD test in these patients. Then stomatocytes. 
when we examine on a dry smear it has a central slit or a stroma which is seen in various conditions of our liver diseases and certain malignancy especially the cancers how will jolly bodies it's a very popular term sometimes we find a short note of for this hobel jolly bodies it's associated with a rapid absorption of the rbc and which is seen in the new bonds it is seen in megaloblastic anemia then it is seen in the hereditary spherocytosis hinge bodies hinge bodies bodies they are visible they are uh, uh inclusion of the denatural hemoglobin which is caused by oxidation of hemoglobin portion on the hemoglobin and the causes responsible for these bodies which we find in the peripheral smear the certain drugs and uh, certain foods like the flavor beans and onion they can also give rise so sometimes there is a reaction also so after that these bodies are produced sideroblastic granules which are seen after repeated transfusion in the patients of hemolytic anemia and thalassemia and also in the lead poisoning then we come to the sickle cell it is very popular if someone is having having sickle cell anemia then the chances of malaria are least in these patients because this this uh, parasite does not survive in this kind of rbc so if you find a sickle cell that means he is not going to have any malaria people they are homozygous for hemoglobin s and heterozygous for hemoglobin s and other thalassemias in which we find this kind of picture now we come to the nucleated rbc and these are the cells which shows that there are immature cells seen in various kinds of anemias especially the megaloblastic anemia and certain fungal or mycobacterial tuberculosis infections these kind of cells they are seen but but often they are missed then we come to the basophilic stippling that is the numerous sm small purplish inclusions which results from the rna and mitochondrial remnants and this kind of say especially stippling they are seen in the lead toxicity patients thalassemia and macrocytic anemias here we see the carboot ring which is very common in the pernicious anemia we find a ring like structure inside the cell with a small nucleated elements which is seen in various leukemias lead poisoning and alcoholic jaundice that is the rolex formana lux forma formation is seen in the it's a kind of stake like arrangement of the red cells where the biconcave double surface of the rbc and they are next to the each other put like this so erythrocytes they are put in a different fashion look like a ring so they are seen in the connective tissue disorder some patients of diabetes uncontrolled malignancies and multiple myeloma and uh, increased in the cathodal proteins such as immunoglobulin deficiencies so coming to the end of the talk cbc which is we all know that is it, it is an inexpensive tool and powerful tool which provide formation about the blood and also about the marrow and the health state of the body it is mainly used to diagnose bone marrow aplasia nutritional deficiencies thrombocytopenia autoimmune conditions infectious and parasite condition malignancies other than the say anemia and the basic things like say some infection so these are the things and that is all i can share with you thank you all members of acp